Hello, friends and artists in fifth grade. Mrs. Gordon here, happy to see you. Um, this will be our last, uh, for those of you who are returning to school for the cohort A or cohort B in the hybrid model, this will be your last um, part that you'll be doing uh, at home. For those of you who are staying virtual, um, I'll still be sharing out some lessons. Um, we, this is your introduction video for your last part, part three of Line and Shape inspired by Gustav Klimt and Lena Iris Victor. Um, so today uh, I'm going to be introducing the principle of design pattern. Um, we're going to then be adding pattern to the foreground uh, and the subject and the background of your art. And we're, if you don't know what those are, don't worry, I'm going to teach you. And you're going to think, reflect, and record. Um, you might need a pencil today, something to make black lines with, like a marker or crayon. I liked having two different um, thicknesses of marker to work with. And you'll need your art from uh, last week. So principles of design. Principles of design. Um, there are seven principles of design. And the principles of design show how artists use the elements of art. The seven principles of design are balance, contrast, emphasis, which I'll be kind of hinting about a little bit later, movement, pattern, which we're going to be focusing on greatly today, uh, rhythm, and unity. So principle of design, pattern. One principle of design is pattern. Pattern is when you repeat any of the elements of art over and over again. So you'll see there are lots of examples of patterns here that you can take a look at more carefully. And you could also, ooh, this is a great one with the spirals, that you could use um, as you could go back to and refer to when you were making your art today. Um, after you take a look at those, you're going to learn a little bit more about pattern by watching this video. And then you're going to analyze um, The Tree of Life by, Victor, uh, by Gustav Klimt and Syzygy by Lena Iris Victor. You're going to compare and contrast these artworks for pattern. Um, what shapes do you see repeated? Are there more geometric or organic patterns? Um, so this tree feels more organic to me, whereas Lena Iris Victor's background seems more geometric. Which lines are repeated? Um, Lena Iris Victor is repeating a lot of vertical lines. Uh, Gustav Klimt is repeating a lot of spiral lines. Uh, which pattern do you like the most? Where did they add pattern to their work? So I uh, am a big fan of the spirals. I also really love how he repeated triangles with lines behind the triangles. And I love these like little ovals and little checkerboards that he has in here. And on uh, Lena Iris Victor, I love this kind of like alternating vertical and horizontal lines. I think that's super pretty. Um, and where did they add pattern? So Lena Iris Victor added pattern to the space behind her work. There's pattern on the dress that she's wearing and Gustav Klimt added it to the ground and to the clothing that they're wearing and to her headdress and even into the tree. So here were some patterns that I kind of uh, played around with drawing that I noticed or was inspired by the work of those two artists. And you can take a look at those. And like I said, remember, you can go back and you can look at these because there are a lot of great, interesting patterns in here. Um, so just to kind of understand a little bit, we're going to talk about space, element of art space. Um, the space in art, uh, it can either be like the space that you create inside of a three-dimensional figure or on the outside of a figure. Space can also be like how close or how far something um, feels from you. So three, vocab three vocabulary words that help us understand more about space is foreground, midground, and background. And before we add pattern to our work, you need to learn a little bit about the subject, the foreground, the midground, and the background. Um, foreground is the space closest to the viewer, usually at the bottom of the art. Midground or background is the space farthest away from the viewer, usually at the top of the art or also behind the subject. The subject in art refers to the main idea represented in the artwork. Say this to yourself. This picture, painting, or piece of art is about a, all right, if you said tree, uh, in this case you were correct, so the subject would be a tree. Um, and then the midground is the space between the foreground and the background. 
Uh, so try it out with Mr. Gustav Klemp's Tree of Life. Move myself over here. Uh, what is the subject? Where is the foreground, the midground, and the background? Okay. Um, the background is the sky behind the tree. The subject is it the tree or the people? It's kind of up to you. In this case, the title gives me a clue. Tree of Life helps me know that the subject is the tree and the people help describe the life. And the foreground is where it's kind of behind here, but where the um, the people's feet would be. And then the midground is kind of at the bottom of the tree. All right. Uh, when you get to the slide, you need to get what you need to make your art. Um, remember, I use a thick and a thin marker. I did not use a pencil today. I was very brave, and I just used my marker. And you'll need your art. So then you'll watch this video. Remember, you can pause the video. And this video is just to give you ideas. You do not have to copy what I do. Your art should look like your art. Your art should not look like my art. But I go through both pieces that I was working on um, and you know, kind of show you where you can add pattern and what you can think about. And then there's even a little hint about emphasis in here. When you are done with your art, you'll see I did not add any color to mine. I left mine black and white. When you are done your art, you're going to save it in a safe place. Get it? Safe place until you can bring it into school, uh, which is going to be happening soon. So um, after that, you're going to think about the questions. What's the element of art that you learned about? One or two. You might have learned about two. You might have learned about more. Um, what did you learn about art or the artist? Well, today you learned very important lesson about space, so I hope you might go back and use some of those vocabulary words and include those in your work. Um, how did you make your art? Remember, there are three things that you want to tell me in how you made your art. What you were drawing or painting, um, the, the, voc the verb for it, were you painting or were you drawing? So in this case, I was drawing pattern um, on my art inspired by uh, Gustav Klempt. And what did you use, what art tool did you use? And I was using uh, two different thicknesses of marker. So click here to record your answer. Next week, um, some of you will be starting back to school. When you come back to school, you will need to bring your art. You will need to bring your art journal. You will need to bring your art supplies to school. Now, let's say you're like, wow, well, I, so my art supplies, I have a potter's wheel in my garage and I, you know, make pots in my garage. No, no, no. <laughs> you need to bring pencils, colored pencils, crayons, markers, scissors, glue, what you have, because for a while we will not be sharing supplies. So what you have in your little Ziploc bag full of supplies is what you'll be able to make art with. Um, if you were to have like a, like a watercolor palette and a brush, you could bring that. Um, if you had, um, you know, like oil pastels or something and you wanted to bring those and it was okay with your people at home, you could do that. Um, remember, if you want to share your work with me, you can share, snap a picture of it um, or a video on Schoology and share it with me through Schoology or with Twitter or Instagram. All right, friends and artists, I hope you have a great time adding pattern to your um, people or tree inspired by Mr. Klempt and Miss Victor, and happy art making.